I will bless the Lord at all times, and his, his praise shall be in my mouth. Praise the Lord with me today, for certainly he is worthy of all of our praises. There's nobody like Jehovah. There's nobody like unto the Lord. Greetings in the perfect and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Ralph Irving, pastor of Greater Leonard Missionary Baptist Church, located in historic Old North St. Louis. Our purpose here today, as we have gathered, is to honor our God in worship, to worship him from whom all blessings flow. The word of the Lord to begin our service this morning is lifted from the first epistle of John, the fourth chapter, verses nine through 11. From the King James, it reads, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but he loved us, and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. So says the word of the Lord. Our invocational prayer. Father God in heaven, in the precious and wonderful and eternal name of Jesus Christ our Lord, we bow. And we come, Father, at the opening of this service loving you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Thanking you, Father, for blessing us, blessing us in salvation, blessing us to see this a new day. Thank you, Father, for your provisions. Thank you for your protection. Father, we thank you for your preservation. We always are thankful for your your healing and your help and the hope that you instill. Father, thank you. And Father, as we begin, we pray that you will bless this, our time here together. Father, visit us today. Allow your Holy Spirit to move mightily in the midst of us. Father, strengthen us in our worship as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Greater Leonard, let us remember the redemptive sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as he has saved us from our sin with his body and blood. We should never ever forget what the Lord has done for us. He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. He died that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Praise the Lord. Also with that church, be reminded, and it may be difficult to forget since the media has it before us 24-7, let us remember that the virus is still quite active and it is still rising in its proportions. And I encourage you to be careful and to be cautious at this time of this COVID-19 virus. Don't listen to all the misinformation about it. It is very real and it is still spreading. So let us keep it down by observing the CDC regulations of wearing the mask, washing our hands, keeping our distance. And as the church would say, and we need to Pray unto the Lord. With that, remember that the November 3rd election is quickly upon us and that we want you to be involved in registration, education, and participation. If you haven't registered to vote, we want you to get out and do that. And then we want, to, want you to educate yourself in terms of what the issues are out there that you're needing to vote on and also then go and actually vote, participate in what you have prepared for. Get out and 
vote. Get out the vote and get out and vote. Also, with the virus, with this vote, it's another V that's the violence. The violence is, is rising exponentially in our city. The statistics prove that by the end of the year would far exceed what it was in 1993, I believe, when it was extremely high and unprecedentedly high. And so we want you to know that there may not be a whole lot of things we can do individually or even as churches, but what we can do as a church is pray. Pray that the Lord will give us opportunity to help be a part of keeping this violence in its place. We want to pray for opportunity to, to decrease and de-escalate the violence in our city. Also, we want you to pray for the Brinkley and Thurman family and the passing of the patriarch of their family, Mr. Brinkley. Pray for them and strengthen them as they're going through the days and the months and the years to come uh, for in their grieving process. Also pray for the Polk family where Bobby Polk has lost his eldest brother uh, having that service on tomorrow in the state of Mississippi. Pray for them as well as they're going forward in their process of, of grease, grief. Now, church, as we are away, remember that you can still be involved in God's word, in your studies every day, in your, in your Sunday church school lessons every day, in your moments of meditation that's led by the word of God. Also, we want you to remain in prayer. Prayer is a very powerful tool that the church has at her disposal. And so we want to be able to actually use it and use it believing that what we ask the Lord for, being in his word, that he will actually do that. So let's continue to pray as well. Let's fellowship at a distance. You can do wellness checks with your brothers and sisters whom you have contact with, call them, see how they're doing, encourage them at this time for as we are away like this, it is causing issues with people. People are having uh, issues of, of anxiety. People are feeling so isolated that they can't hardly breathe, so to speak. So a fresh breath of fellowship from you will go a long, long way with your brothers and sisters in Christ. So let's be mindful of doing that and do it without delay. In fact, do it today. Pray with me again. Father in heaven, we are here again and we are here in the method and mode of prayer. We come, O oh Heavenly Father, seeking your face, desiring your presence, loving you with all that is within us, with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We love you. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father. We are grateful for your being our, our Heavenly Father thankful for your saving our souls. Thank you, Father, for keeping us all along this Christian journey. Thank you, Father, for covering us at this season of the COVID, this COVID-19 virus. Father, thank you for such covering that keeps us Bless us and strengthen us today, we pray. Hear this, your servant's prayer. Father, thank you for Jesus, our Savior. Thank you, Father, for his redemptive work of the cross. And thank you for his real resurrection. Thank you, Father, for his promised return. 
Thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit, by whom we are all born again, such as are your people. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit, by whom we are, we are kept. Thank you, Father, for his guidance. Thank you for his leading us. Thank you for his intercession as we, with best we know, pray. For he intercedes for us with groanings that we just don't understand. Father, hear this, your servant's prayer. Dear Father, I pray for the, the bereft among us. Bless the Brinkley and Thurman families. As Mr. Lawrence Samuel Brinkley has made his transition, look on them, Father, and strengthen them, comfort them. Father, bless the Polk family. Bobby Polk having lost his elder brother. Bless him, bless his wife Pat, bless his children and bless that entire family. Have mercy on them and allow them your comfort and consolation at this, their season of grief. Hear this, your servant's prayer. Father, bless the sick and the shut-in among us for sickness can be chronic, can be long-term, there are those who wish that they just had 24 hours without the sickness, without the pain, without the worry. Lord, allow them your relief today. Allow them to feel the burden of illness, sickness lifted from them, if not but just for a little while. Let your will, your perfect will be done. Dear Father, hear this, your servant's prayer. Bless all of greater letter. In fact, Father, bless every church that is open in thy name. Keep us, Father, until we all get home. Allow a sense of congruency amongst your people where we can be as one, really, Dear Lord, hear this, your servant's prayer. Father, accept our worship and accept us in worship today as we worship you in the splendor of holiness. Father, I pray that you will inhabit all of our praises. For as these our praises go up, yes, your blessings certainly do descend. Hear this, your servant's prayer. Bless the tithe, the offering, and the pledge that has been given. And bless those who have attended, it, attended to it. Bless them according to your holy word, your word that never, ever fails. Bless the music ministry as they minister today. Bless all who are involved in this service the technicians, audio, and visual. Bless our ushers and health unit ministry as they are here checking to make sure we're all healthy, safe, and sound. Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for this another opportunity, a blessed opportunity to worship your holy name. For in it, Father, we are strengthened. Our souls are made glad. Bless us now, Father, at this glad time of worship. And we'll always be careful to give you the praise. Bless now and bless forever is our prayer in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, our song of praise.
What a wonderful exercise for the people of God to be engaged in. Blessing the Lord from whom all blessings do flow. We need to praise him with all that is within us. For he is worthy of all of such praise and so much more. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to invite you to bow your heads with us again as we petition our great God this morning as we are about to enter into this time where preaching is made. Father God in heaven, in the precious name of Christ our Lord, we come again, Father. We come at this time where the service is punctuated with preaching. And I ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, that you would speak to our hearts. Allow your word to resonate within. Have your Holy Spirit to open up your word to us and to help us to open ourselves up to your word. Father, take me, your servant, and use me as a willing instrument of your holy will that your great and wonderful will be done. Father, that you may be glorified, that some saint will be edified, some lost soul will be evangelized. Father, have your way today. And I pray that the words of my mouth, as well as the meditations of my heart, be found acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my strength, my Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would, this morning, church, I would love for you to go with me to the book of Judges. The book of Judges, located in the Old Testament, the book of Judges. And we are, in particular, in the 16th chapter the 16th chapter of the book of Judges. And I will begin reading at the 26th verse and through the 31st. And these words are recorded. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me. I pray thee only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand and of the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people were, that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his, his life. That 30th verse in particular. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. In that 31st verse that we omitted. Then his 
brethren and all the house of the father of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtoel in the burying place of Manoah, his father. And he judged Israel 20 years. So says the word of the Lord. The title of this message this morning is God Proves His Purpose. God Proves His Purpose. God shows his purpose to be true. Despite the flawed character of the person God uses, his purpose will be borne out or carried out even in the season of this crippling COVID-19 virus. God will bear out his purpose, his purpose for you. Amen. God proves his his purpose. Whether you know it or not, God has a purpose for every true believer in Christ. We all have a God-given purpose that God expects us to, to work out. And we don't work it out within our own abilities, but God blesses us with the ability to do it as he did with Samson. Samson, no pun intended, had a Herculean, Herculean task to perform in delivering Israel from the Philistines. God proves his purpose. Our purpose is to work God's purpose. God chooses us and uses us for his purpose. Our purpose is to promote God's purpose, not our own, but his. And the purpose he gives us is understood only in the sense that we use it, we operate in that purpose to fulfill his purpose. And God's ultimate purpose is to show his love to us by delivering us from our sin. We are involved in that work with the Lord. We are co-workers with God. From his birth, Samson was appointed of God to deliver Israel from the rule of the idolatrous nation of the Philistines. God needed to protect and preserve his people, Israel. That was the number one thing for him for through Israel would come the Savior of the world, his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. So he needed to keep Israel despite what was going on all around them. And these vibrant and vicious warriors, these Philistines, had them under their thumb to some degree. And God needed to preserve his people. They didn't need to become idolatrous people. They didn't need to become worshipers of, of idols, but they needed to remain his people. And so he had to preserve them from such people as that. For through those people, through the Israelites, would come his salvation. Despite his divinely appointed purpose, Samson messed up. Isn't that how you feel sometimes despite what God has blessed you to do? It seems like you mess up. You find yourself on your knees every night before you go, into, go to bed and say, Lord, forgive me for again I messed up today. Lord, give me another chance. Is anybody listening to me today? But despite his mess up, God proved or carried out his purpose. He did it despite of Samson's mess up. Brothers and sisters, through impaired and imperfect sources, God protects or accomplishes his purpose because in our weakness, God's strength is made perfect. We need to know that God has a handle on what his purpose is and he will see it through. The apostle Paul declared with bold clarity, for when I am weak, 
then am I strong. In Paul's insufficient strength, he recognized and received perfect strength from God, God's grace. God's grace, God's help, God's unearned assistance perfects or accomplishes his purpose through imperfect humanity. humanity. There are no perfect people, but we're trying to serve the perfect God. Am I right about it? God has a perfect purpose, and we are imperfect people given a perfect purpose from God to carry out his ultimate perfect purpose. And I'm here to tell somebody that no matter that you mess up, God will give you another chance. You need to have a a repentant heart. You need to want to carry out God's will. God will give you another chance. Brothers and sisters, God proves his purpose with another chance. God is determined to carry out his purpose. God is determined to use you no matter how many times you messed up. If you look over Samson's life, every page you turn, every sentence you come across, Samson is found messing up. But time and time again, God used uh, Samson to do his holy will. Verse 28 tells us, And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. God proves his purpose with another chance. Somebody here today feels like you have messed up so badly, God just don't want to have anything to do with you. But I'm telling you, that's how deep God's love goes. God still loves you, and God yet wants to use every one of us. God will give us another chance. Samson, who was born of a promise, with much promise, performed poorly in his purpose. He was born of a woman that could not bear children, but she, by promise and purpose of God, became pregnant and bore a son and called him Samson. Perhaps you feel barren, without possibility, without promise, without purpose. Maybe you feel like your life is not going anywhere, that your life doesn't matter for so for too much and, and it just doesn't have very much worth at all but I'm here to tell you that God created you and God instilled a worth in you. God came down through 42 generations just to save us from our sin but you didn't start out that way. You didn't start out feeling barren or being barren and without possibility and without promise and and without purpose. Your life didn't begin that way. That, That little fresh bundle of joy that we all were when we were born into this world, we were born with much possibility. We were born with promise. We were born with purpose. We we were not barren or void of possibility. God had a reason for bringing us into this world. So it was with Samson. He started out as a match for his purpose, but he ended up a mess. His choices, as our choices, changed his character, but it did not and could not change God's purpose. It doesn't matter how much you mess up. You can't mess up God's purpose. You can mess up your life, but you can never mess up God's purpose. God's perfect is perfect. Uh, a purpose is perfect. God's perfect is his purpose is, is true today. And we need to realize and know that you just can't mess up God's purpose. Uh, am I talking to anybody today? You might mess up, but God's purpose will remain true. Samson didn't deliver Israel from the Philistines as was his purpose. But God preserved Israel as was his purpose. You may not be able to carry out what you should do, but God will always carry out what he has purpose to do. And he did carry it out by giving Samson another chance. 
He didn't give up on Samson, and Samson didn't give up on God. You know, sometimes when you get into so much deep trouble that you just don't want to serve God anymore, you don't want to hear his name anymore, you don't want to go to church anymore, you don't want to be around saints anymore, you don't want to pray anymore, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. They, they had taken Samson, and they bore out his eyes, and they, they bound him up, and they, they, they took him, and they caused him to labor in the prison house. House. And I tell you, Samson had enough time to think about his God. God, why am I in this trouble? God, why won't you get me out of here? God, why won't you deliver me from these, my enemies? But I'm here to tell you, God didn't get him in trouble. Samson got himself in trouble. But God heard Samson when he cried, oh Lord, remember me. God does remember us. Church, are you, are you listening to me today? Samson was born into the Nazarite vow. He was never to drink strong drink, nor cut his hair, nor touch a dead body, of which he voluntarily violated. Am I, am I being familiar with anybody? Samson, as all Jews, was to marry only within the circle of the Hebrew people, of which he voluntarily violated. Oftentimes we saints find ourselves unequally yoked. Samson was a judge of Israel, and as such, he was to be a positive example in every way, especially morally, of which he voluntarily violated. By his willful sin and disobedience and his wild and willful lack of discipline, is anybody here without that discipline to live the Christian life, to live the moral life according to the word of God? Temptation is all around us and temptation is out to get you. But if God has you in his hand and if you will hold on to his hand, you will be all right. Hallelujah, somebody. Samson possessed everything to be and perform everything of his God-given purpose, but he misused it all for his own poor purpose. You know how it is. God blesses you with a gift and it's so easy for you and you find yourself performing it over and over and over again, but oftentimes it's for our own purposes, for our own gratification. It has nothing to do with carrying out God's Number one purpose, and I need to tell somebody today that the purpose that God gave you won't work in the world. It will only work in the kingdom. And so we use it through the kingdom that we might go out into the world and convince men and women, boys and girls, that they need to be saved. That is God's number one purpose. That ought to be our number one desire. We ought to feel the, the burden of lost souls right Resting in our hearts day in and day out. As a result, Samson was captured by his enemies, blinded by his enemies, bound and made to labor by his enemies. Somebody might be bound up by your enemies, whatever that enemy looks like, whatever form that enemy takes on in your life, anything that can capture you and hold you, you need to Break away from it and call out to the Lord. Oh, Lord, remember me. There's so many enemies that's trying to prevent you from carrying out your purpose. And only you know what those enemies are. We all have them in our life. And they can prevent us from carrying out the purpose that God has laid on us. It was only because he had already been blinded bound and made to labor by his sin. That's the only way that they could capture Samson. That is the only way that they could put out his eyes. That's the only way that they could tie him up. That's the only way that they could put him in the labor, in the prison house and cause him to labor. It was because he had already messed up in his sin. But no, today God will fix up what you messed up. Hallelujah, somebody, concerning his purpose. God's strength was made perfect in Samson's personal weakness. And in his battered, beaten, and broken weakness, Samson, that, that little son that his name means, that seemed to have lost his life, carried out to God, cried out to God for a restored strength of his purpose to give him another chance 
for God to do it to him one more time. Sometimes we need to just cry out to the Lord, oh Lord, remember me, oh Lord, amen, somebody do it to me one more time because we want to get it right for the Lord. Brothers and sisters, when you're too weak for your purpose, pray to God that he will make you a match for your purpose in place of the mess you have become. And God will loose you from the shackles of your mess. God will make of you a match for your purpose. God will, he will, hallelujah somebody, he will do it to you one more time to take down what took you down. Not only that, brothers and sisters, God proves his purpose. When you're buried in your purpose for his purpose, God proves his purpose when you're buried in your purpose for his purpose. Verse 30 tells us, and Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the Lord's and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. God proves his purpose when you're buried in your purpose for his purpose. Sometimes you ought to bury yourself in your purpose. You know how it is when you're on your career path, you bury yourself in your work. You know how it is, is when you're going on to higher education, you bury yourself in your studies. You need to bury yourself sometimes in your purpose to carry out God's purpose. We use so much time to do everything but what God has purposed for us to do. We ought to be found doing that more so than anything else that we do. In everything that you do, you can carry out the purpose that God has given you. When you're cooking your meal, you can carry out that purpose. When you're rearing your children, you can carry out that purpose. When you're in your marital relationship, you can carry out that purpose. You can carry out that purpose doing anything, anywhere, anytime. You need to be found buried in your purpose. A public celebratory sacrifice for Dagon, the idol god of the Philistines, was given and held by the five lords of the five influential cities of the Philistines. The attendance at that crazed praise fest for, the false, for that false god included both the full capacity of the structure and 3,000 men and women that occupied and packed out the roof. I tell you, it was a packed out event for that no God called Dagon. And they were all there, even those five ruling personalities. And they were there praising their God for delivering that pest of theirs, Samson, into their hands to do with him what they wanted him to do. And so they were praising their God. They were drinking their drink. They were clapping their hands. They were shouting to a high heaven. They were just all over the place, enthusiastically so, all because Samson had been captured. Samson was in their hand. Samson had caused trouble all through their land. And now they had Samson in their hands. You know how it is for yourself that you've been walking around talking about your child of God. And people could see the blessings of God upon you. And then something happened in your poor life. And it seemed like it had you tied up and bound up and tangled up. But I tell you, just keep on keeping on in the Lord and everything will be all right. They had Samson. Samson's hair started to grow back. Samson wanted to be avenged, but more likely than not. He wanted to glorify his God. He wanted to perform his purpose at the very end of his life. And so he cried out, Lord, remember me. 
I just want to do God's will today. I want to allow him to take my life and, and do with me what he will. Because that's what my life is truly all about. I want to serve the Lord with all that is within me. I ought to have one, two, or three saints that will walk with me this morning that feels the same way. Don't you want to serve the Lord with gladness? Don't you want to serve the Lord with all that is within you? Or you are most happy and most satisfied when you are in service for the Lord? Those pagan worshipers, they gave sacrifice to the God of their vain imagination and crooked creation, which in effect was no more than an imagination or image of their vanity. When you worship yourself, brothers and sisters, hallelujah, somebody. When you worship yourself, you always had it for a fall. They sacrificed, thanking their God for delivering that powerful and prominent problem, Samson, into their hands. But in fact, they got Samson by the dollar and deceit of Delilah. And Samson, Samson, sorry disobedience to God. Samson's lust landed him in lockdown with a haircut he didn't want. Have you ever gone to the barber or to the beautician and you're left with a haircut that you didn't want? I'm here to tell you today that your hair will uh, grow out. When you mess up, it's like getting a haircut that you didn't want. But I'm here to tell you, just like with Samson, though you messed up, your hair will grow out again. Just hold on and hold out. They brought out this once mighty Samson, but now weak, so they thought. They brought him out. He was blind. They brought him out. He was bound. They brought him out. He had been grinding and laboring like a beast of the field. They brought him out. They sat in a structure and they sat upon the structure and they were able to look down at Samson <laughs> and they had Samson performing like a trained bear. <laughs> And they looked at him and they made sport of him. They laughed at him. They chuckled at him. You can be in life experiences and people will laugh at you. And they can chuckle at you and say, where is your God now? Where is your God? Why won't he come and see about you now? As they take you out there and make sport of you. They brought out that once mighty Samson. But now weak, so they thought. Samson's strength, you need to know, didn't really rest in his hair, nor in his muscle mass. His strength came from his omnipotent God. His hair was just symbolic. His muscle mass was only symbolic. Because the feats that God, that uh, Samson had performed was greater than just hair strength. It was greater than just muscle strength. This was supernatural strength that Moses, that, that Samson had, and he got it from the Lord. Brothers and sisters, when self suffers you to lose, God will see you through every time. When self lets you down, God will lift you up. When self deludes you, God will deliver you. I'm, I'm here to tell you, ain't that what happened to Samson? I'm here to tell you, that may be something that's happening to you today. But God will give you another chance. Yes, he will. God proves his purpose. When you're buried in your purpose, for his purpose, as the Philistines parted, Samson prayed. When folk are partying, saying, look at him now. When folk are partying, being happy about you being down on your luck, you ought to be found praying while they're partying. They parted, but Samson was found praying. And through that powerful prayer, 
the powerful God, that powerful God brought down that which dared to exalt itself over him. What a mighty God we serve. I tell you, things will try to exalt itself above your God by trying to keep you down. But I'm here to tell you that God is the mighty God and nothing and no one can outdo our God. Samson, with all of his might, moved two main supports and buried himself in his purpose. His purpose was to deliver Israel from the Philistines. I'm here to tell you that Moses asked the little lad, show me where the main supporting pillars are that I might rest against them. The lad took Moses, directed him to where he wanted to be. And that's when Samson was in position to call on his God. I tell you, when they really got your back against the wall, that's when you need to really call out to your Lord. Call out to your God. And when you call out, when your back is against the wall and God delivers you, they know that you serve a mighty God. And so Moses, so Samson got against these main supports. And he called on God to do it to him one more time. And the Bible tells us that Samson bowed himself, feeling the power of the Lord surging in him again. And he pushed down those pillars and down came the house. 3,000 on the roof being killed at that time. And all that were in the structure below Everybody lost their lives, even including uh, Samson. Samson was buried in his purpose, doing at his death what he was, in, one of it, was unable to do all of his life. It seemed like you've been struggling all your life to fulfill your purpose. And it seemed like you're at the end of your life. And you wonder, will the Lord ever use you? But I'm here to tell you, just ask him, Lord, remember me. Lord, do it to me one more time. Lord, give me another chance. Lord, let me bury myself in my purpose. Jesus moved the curtain of eternity, and he stepped right in, just right on time. He came with purpose, born in Bethlehem, reared in Nazareth, ministered in Galilee. Did he not? I tell you, he, he ministered there. And on Calvary, he was stretched between two thieves. Died that we might have life and life abundantly. Was buried. And on that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. So we need to be careful about believing and thinking that it's all over because we messed up. Because even in your mess up, God will fix it up. Because God will see to it that his purpose is performed. So cry out when it seems like your mess up is so messed up. And he who is able to fix it up will. Moses got another chance. And you can have that other, another chance as well. Just cry out to the Lord. Be repentant. Be sorry for not being what God has purposed you to be. And see the Lord work it out. Nobody can prevent your purpose but you. No one can prevent your purpose but you. Because your purpose is a God-given purpose. And you're God's little one. And so who is it that can come against you when God is on your side? No one can get in the way and prevent your purpose but you. And God will give you another chance. Just cry out today. That might be you today. Being born again being blood-bought, you may feel as if 
You just messed up too badly. But I'm here to encourage you. God will give you another chance. I know you're like me. You think about the many times you've messed up and in the many ways you've messed up. Nobody forced you. You succumbed to the temptation because that's what you wanted. God knows how we are. He made us. And that why, that's why he's given us help. Help in his Holy Spirit to help us all along this Christian journey. Maybe you're not saved. Maybe you're not on the path of salvation. Maybe you haven't taken that initial step. And you do so by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Having faith. Faith being the substance of things or the confidence of things you hope for or the things you expect. And it's the proof, the evidence of things you cannot see, things that are invisible. God is the invisible God. We don't see him. We can't see him with our physical sight. But he's real. And real faith puts us in touch with the real God. You can have that faith today. And that faith comes by hearing. And the hearing that needs to be taken, taking place is the hearing of God's word. But how can you hear? The question went up one day without a preacher. And how can he preach unless he be sent? God has provided everything for you to be saved. It's just a matter of whether or not you'll make that step. Make that step today. There's one thing God will not do. He will not take your will. You have to give it to him. Do that today. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe unto righteousness, and it's with your mouth that confession is made unto salvation. So come to him today. Come to him in faith. Come to him with a repentant heart. Come to him in true confession. Come. He wants you to come. He came through 42 human gener generations to save us from our sin. And all you need to do is have that faith. He has made that possible. Come to him now. Come to him. Come to him. In his invitation that yet stands, he says, Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, rest unto your very soul. With all the chaos and calamity going on in this nation and around the world at this point in human history, it makes the soul tired. Sin makes the soul tired. And Jesus... If you're born again, he can give you that rest. And Jesus, if you are not born again, but have that desire today, he can give you rest from the sin that is within. Come today. Come without delay. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we certainly thank you for your wonderful word. Father, you take imperfect creatures to deliver your perfect word. 
and we know that you give the increase. We're not always proficient enough. We're not always up to par. But God, it is your purpose that your word be delivered. And I know, Father, that you are able and I know that you will get your point across. And we thank you for your word that never, ever changes. We thank you for your word that never, ever fails. Thank you for your word today that we find to always be, yes, always, both lamp and light. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yes, we lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth, to the cross, to the grave, and back to the sky. We lift your name on high. Praise the name of the Lord. And as we prepare to leave this place, but never his presence, we do so with this hymn from our psalmist, Anitra Adams. To God be the benediction. Now may the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with all of us. Henceforth now and forevermore, let us all say one more time. Amen. God bless you. Be blessed. Be at peace. Bless you.